so um and uh uh Car Carlene is saying how d uh, Democrats are not direct. Fauci should have told Jordan it was because of no mask or vaccine people um, or the borders from uh, Trump sent, uh, sending people to Mexico. The, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, he's not a Democrat, though. Fauci is, in, in many ways, a, you know, he is a bureaucrat. He works in the government, but he's, he's supposed to be nonpartisan. So if he attacks, you know, while he's talking to Jim Jordan, other than on a personal level with you ranting at me again, you know, if he goes into, it's the anti-vaxxers that are killing people, then that lights a fire and the, and it gives, it pours gasoline on that anti-vaxxer fire. And what you want to do as far as dealing with that message, as much as it might be frustrating, is over time you have to just recognize how absurd it is, how anti-science and, and anti-public health and anti-life it is in a lot of ways. And you just have to let that sit. You don't have the option to yell at people. That's for people like me. <laughs> that's that's what our role is. We're the ones, we get to be the Dr. Fauci's anger translator, as it were. So, um, the president signed an executive order this week um, uh, that included some really obvious things like dismissing some obvious spies from the country that have been working in the, you know, as the, the assistant uh, agricultural attaché attache to Siberia. We, I am the biggest corn producer on uh, the iceberg that we have. Um, we towed into land for fresh drinking water. We now can grow herbs and spices. Um, that like they've been punting those folks, and they some of them have thirty days to get out. Others um, had to leave by Thursday night. A couple of them were told to get packing and, and be out of the country in 24 hours. Others have 30 days to kind of pack up their families and everybody else and beat it. Um, the Treasury also, and this is kind of the Deep Reads version of it, issued a directive that prohibits U.S. financial institutions, banks, Goldman Sachs, uh, and investment firms, hedge funds, it's a lot of people, from participation, from participation at hmm. all. In the primary market for ruble or non-ruble denominated bonds issued after June 14, 2021 by the Central Bank of the Russian Federation, the National Wealth Fund of the Russian Federation, or the Ministry of Finance of the Russian Federation, and lending ruble or non-ruble denominated funds to the Central Bank of the Russian Federation, the National, National Wealth Fund of the Russian Federation, or the Ministry of Finance of the Russian Federation. This directive provides authority for the U.S. government to expand sovereign debt sanctions on Russia as appropriate. <clears throat> they can't even find alternate ways through the U.S. economy to funnel money to themselves to pay off their debts or deal with them at all in terms of bond issues. That that in of itself sounds, eh, you know, it's all right. It's, that's okay. But yeah, but where's the James Bond moment? You know, when's he going to no. shoot somebody with a, when, when's somebody going to spray something in somebody's face and then jump out the window with a suitcase full of cash carrying, you know, just using the, the blinds cord and then take it off straight in his tie and jump in a boat that has missiles on it. This is unfortunately for the, you know, the fun part of life, this is way more effective and is way more infuriating that to Russia and the oligarchs that run it than shooting one of their agents, which they really couldn't give a crap about. You know, and I, it, John, did you see the Q, the Q doc? Have you watched the one, you know? I've seen some highlights. The, one of the things that really stands out in it is just how deep Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene were in the Q world. They show up in oh. that, they, they, I mean, she did multiple posts. She was, an, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene was an early adopter of it. Whereas Bobert seemed kind of like, I don't know, I saw something and maybe that's it. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene was looking, she wanted to be a baker in the, in the people that like read the Q posts and then they interpret them for everybody and then they disseminate them. She wanted to be in that chain of command before she ran for office. That's what she was doing on Facebook. And so most of the posts you see where she's talking about Q related stuff, she's being a baker. She's going, this happened, this happened, and these are linked, and this is why. She's, you know, but she's reading them without any criticism whatsoever. 
to start with. She's like, I just heard this. This is amazing. You know, which is one of the dumbest ways you can approach anything you read on the internet from someone that you don't know personally. If, if there's any way better uh, on a social media level to walk into a rake, it is effectively to to go, I saw this on the internet. This is, I mean, in a bulletin board group. This was on Reddit. Can you believe this? It's a whole, it's a manifesto, I guess. It's really interesting, you know. Um, and Marjorie Taylor Greene and uh, and uh, Lauren Boebert got a lot of press this week because they were part of this um, they did two things. One is they were the lone two votes against a bone marrow transplant bill um, that came out. Uh, it was, you know, whatever, 418 to 2. Everybody but them voted for it. Even Paul Gosar, the other guy who started the Anglo-Saxon oh, wow. America First White Supremacy Caucus. Um, the, you know, the, the, the Whitey Caucus. Uh, the, should we just call it the Cracker Caucus? I mean, isn't that there really the Cracker Caucus? Let's just call them the Cracker Caucus. Because, um, I, you know, I, the the Freedom Caucasians, you know, because they don't have any black members, you know, I've often called them that. But the Cracker Caucus is very specific. Um, but uh, they, both Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene were the only the lone two votes against this. And it took them almost 48 hours to explain their vote. Why they were the two that did it. Now, it could have been that they believed more people were going to vote against this thing. And that they just being, you know, with the reading comprehension weaknesses that they obviously have, that they looked at this stuff and, and thought... Oh God, this is terrible. I just, this is obviously part of the adrenochrome pedivore crowd stuff. This is, you know, this is just supplying bone marrow to the vampires that live under the capital, right? That kind of thing. Obviously, they could, you know, they could clearly have, uh, you know, have said something, you know, believe that and gone, well, a lot of the folks around me, all the Trump supporters are going to vote against it. This will, we'll be in lockstep against this. And then it turned out when they, you know, they, Clip, they push the button. It turned out later they were the only two, and then all of a sudden they're having to explain why the two of them, who apparently were gaggling about this, you know, going, "Oh my God, this is it's," you know, I wouldn't vote for that, would you? You know, and then they both right. ended up voting against it. Um, were caught off guard by the fact they were the only two. That's entirely possible. The Rand Pauls of the world, the, the Bernie Sanders of the world, when they're the only ones who vote against something, they know. They have, right. they're aware of the caucus. They're aware of the votes. They're, they're aware of what's being whipped. They've spoken to their to their whips several times, so they know which way votes are going to go anyways. These guys, I doubt they even care. So they voted against this, and their reasoning, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene's the only one who's given, that I've seen anyways, an actual answer as to why. And it was because there was nothing implicitly in the bill that prevents the selling of fetal spinal tissue Uh or, you know, or, or fetal bone marrow. Well, for the record, there's nothing in the transportation bill that directly keeps the government from being able to transport fetal bone marrow, you know, either. Any of it, like, because it's not included isn't because that's because that's what it allows for it to happen. And because that's what they want. It simply has nothing to do with this. Why indeed would it? Where in this is that valuable? This is literally just right. to help people donate bone marrow and get matched with people who need it. And and people who need bone marrow getting donors that match with them. Like that's, it's supposed to ease that process and provide funding to make that, you know, uh, more available. It's stunning that this is but again this links directly to the QAnon stuff this this links directly to their belief systems they absolutely believe that there is this underground deep state pedivore adrenochrome psycho group of people that are drinking baby spine juice and they really think this and they are combing through bills and by combing through I mean looking at the titles and going ew bone marrow no way right. you know um and uh, and they're projecting that belief system onto bills presented to them that are very run-of-the-mill. Now, the lucky part is, is that there are very few of them. 
But then all of a sudden, um, they decide to come out with this America First Caucus. Now, all jokes about the, the, the word caucus aside... Um, and the fact that it has George Washington on it, and I'm not quite sure, other than he was the first American president under our con current constitution. We obviously had nine presidents before that, no, uh, nine presiding officers, a president preside, get it? So um, uh, Peyton Randolph was actually the first president of what you know would later become the United States. Uh, George Washington was the first president under the current constitution that we ratified just so you know so peyton randolph here's to you buddy so um the um margaret taylor green pa paul gosar uh lauren bobert um they've been distributing materials calling for a common respect for uniquely anglo-saxon political traditions which i don't know i'd love to know what the they consider those to be uniquely anglo-saxon if they exist huh Knock yourself out, man. Every culture and every society that has some sort of, like, you you know, uh, like Middle Eastern algebra. You know what I mean? Like the, the existence of early algebra um, from the Middle East. That's, that's a unique contribution of Middle Eastern mathematicians to the world of mathematics that uh, benefit us all. And that's that's pretty unique, you know? Um, and, and we appreciate those kind of things and we all absorb those and the whole world benefits because of unique cultures being able to contribute, you know, elements of their culture that to the, to the greater zeitgeist, right? But, um, I, they don't seem to list those and return to an architectural style that quote, befits the progeny of European architecture, which I assume they mean Greco-Roman architecture, um, which, you know, as a Mason, I end up having to give a lecture on every couple of months. Um, and so I, I don't know, other than the fact that it passed through Europe from Greco-Roman movements that they think that like, basically Ooh. they want everything to look like a bank is what they're saying. They don't want modern architecture. The Native American Museum in, in Washington, D.C. stands out like a sore thumb. They don't like it. They want all the buildings to kind of have a uniform architect it's very weird now obviously you want stuff to fit together it's like a skyline if you have a weird a big weird building sticking out in the skyline like something ugly like what what, what kind of thing like trump tower for example um you you know you can kind of ruin a skyline if it doesn't kind of you know the designs don't match so you want some sort of level of like well i mean it should fit in but you know having a frank lloyd wright style building is not an affront to american culture it is a natural expression of american culture and he was a white dude you would think they wouldn't mind but i guess not um excellent chris as am i um uh and uh so all right so this was um the literature which they pa they were passing out under immigration they have america is a nation with a border and a culture Strengthened by a common respect for uniquely Anglo-Saxon political traditions. Well, obviously, parts of our, our Constitution come from the Iroquois Nations Treaty, so no. They also uh, have linkages with, indeed, many, you know, urine and sub-European uh, agreements that came and went, that failed, and that, you know, had great parts to them but didn't succeed. So the uniquely part, uniquely absorbing certain parts of it. And, and look, there's nothing wrong with the Anglo-Saxon tradition of governance. There isn't. But the uniquely part is kind of where they go, we are a Judeo-Christian nation, therefore we are a Christian nation by de facto because there aren't enough Jews here to make the argument for the other half. That's, I mean, that's yeah. effectively the kind of arguments these guys make. Um, uh, history has shown that societal trust and political unity are threatened when foreign citizens are imported en masse into a country, particularly without institutional support for assimilation and an expansive welfare state to bail them out should they fail to contribute positively to the country. I don't know where the history part of that is at sure, all. Yeah. That's, I mean, what are you talking about? Invading armies? I mean, they're kind of alluding <laughs> to that. They're talking about invading armies squatting outside your cities. You know, this is, this is the, you know, circling Jericho and blowing horns. Um, 
I think I blew past the break, didn't I? Or did I? Do we? Wait, did I miss that? Yeah, no. you blew past no. it. Yes, I did. We got to take a break. Sorry about that. I did blow right past it. I was getting all caught up in this. We'll be back with more of the uh, the uh, the Cracker Caucus's initial launch documents um, right after this. <laughs> 